My taste in film is eclectic to say the least. I find just as much enjoyment out of something like Portrait of a Lady on Fire or Phantom Thread as I do to Dazed and Confused or Superbad, because sometimes, after you finish your monthly rewatch of Satan Tango, you just want to sit back and relax to a stoner comedy. Shit, were you just getting laid? No! Yeah, I was, but... Yes, oh, I yes he was! was. So what you think, guys? I'm not even... Sit the fuck down! Okay. Stay there! Oh, There's something down. about this genre of comedy that is just so easy to watch. It's perfect for when you want to be just alone, or for when you are with a bunch of friends and want something that everyone will like. I want to look at two of my favourite stoner comedies today, The Big Lebowski and, of course, Superbad, because you can't make a video like this without it. I don't want to do the conventional, this is what every genre needs or anything like that, because it's overdone and simply boring. I do want to do something a bit different though, so in today's video I'll be looking at the identifiable cinematography, what makes them so enjoyable to watch, as well as comparing The Big Lebowski to Superbad quite loosely, but it is the same genre, just nine years apart. Would you like me to buy you alcohol? That would be lovely! Enjoy your remaining years! I will! Enjoy fucking jewels! I will! I do still want to touch on the cinematography of these films, even though this video is from more of a theory standpoint. To put the cinematography into one word, it's quite relaxed. We aren't usually overwhelmed, it's still interesting to watch, but in the end, these are films that are about the lives of the characters more than anything else. Alright, alright, alright. However, rules are made to be broken, and these movies have quite the range of filmmakers, including Paul Thomas Anderson with Inherent Vice, The Big Lebowski and The Coen Brothers, as well as Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, directed by Terry Gilliam. Out of all the stoner comedies I've seen, these have to be the best cinematography-wise, but when you have films shot by Roger Deakins and Robert Ellswit, they're going to be. The colours of any stoner comedy tends to be quite bold. This not only draws our attention in, but it keeps it there. The shots tend to be much wider throughout these films as well, but ultimately we always forget that the camera was even there. The cinematography obviously really depends on the film though. Superbad's cinematography is much simpler than Inherent Vice's, and that's not to say it's worse in any way, since it was right for the story. The cinematography on Inherent Vice simply wouldn't have worked for something like Superbad, and vice versa. Because you don't want an asshole where your face used to be, Wailing Jennings. Hold his fucking hand! Fucking hold my hand! There! That's not so hard, is it? Here, McLovin, have a cigarette. So, what is it that makes these films so enjoyable to watch? Well, to me, it seems to be the semi-relatable characters. I mean, Harold and Kumar are more relatable than Theodore and Samantha, for example. We also have the low stress plot. I mean, Superbad is about some high schoolers getting to a party, and Dazed and Confused is about the last day of school before summer. It's very hard to become stressed about these plots, as we really don't need to think about much, as opposed to a film like Nocturnal Animals, where we have all of these themes, characters, and stories to worry about. Now, Scream is possibly my favourite horror film of all time. You simply can't top it, and I would say, as a subgenre, it could technically be classed as a stoner comedy of sorts, but the more obvious choice is Scary Movie. The first one, of course. Reporting live for Black TV. White folks are dead, we're getting the fuck out of here! We have the extravagant <laughs> characters, engaging story, references from recent films, and it just doesn't take itself too seriously. I mean, there aren't many other spoofs, if any at all, that do it as well as they did. I for one was born after the second film was released, and whilst I may not get all of the references, I'm never bored when watching it. Hello? What's your favourite scary movie? <laughs> I also can't not mention the generic elements of every stoner comedy. Firstly, we have the pop culture references. Every single one of these films is just full of them, and whilst this does make them a bit more dated in the current year, they still feel pretty relatable, since the staple references haven't changed too much. We also have the terrible names, satirised authority figures, and of course, the drug use. I think overall, it's a mix of the characters and the no-stress plots that make these so enjoyable to watch. We basically get to turn our brains off for two hours and simply enjoy the film. It's also nice to just forget about the outside world. And if you were looking for some recommendations, some of my favourites are Easy Rider, Inherent Vice, Dazed and Confused, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, and The Big Lebowski. 
super bad as well. So here's what's about to happen. We're going to arrest these two guys, and you're going to write a witness report saying they left out in front of our car like madmen, and there was nothing we can do to avoid hitting them. Sound cool? Yeah, that's fine. Good. These are two very different films. On the one hand, we have a movie about two guys who are searching for a guy who pissed on one of their rugs. And on the other hand, we have three guys trying to get to an average high school party, one of which is interrupted by two of the most iconic cops in film. I think we need to start by looking at the cinematography though. I'm just going to mention this straight off the bat, but one of these films was shot by the master himself, Roger Deakins. Now this isn't to say that Russ also Brick did a worse job. His cinematography told the story of Superbad, and you wouldn't be able to swap it out with the Big Lebowski cinematography, as it just wouldn't work, and vice versa. The role of the cinematographer is to tell the story through images, and that's exactly what both of these guys did. However, there are some stark differences. Superbad, for example, is much more colourful. We are on a tighter lens, but both films make us forget that the camera is even there, which is ultimately what you want as a DP. But also, why are they both relatable? Well, whilst most of us won't be in the same situation as the dude, bad things can still happen to us at random, and I'm sure they spiral occasionally. But more importantly, the characters are semi-believable, like in Superbad. Let's be honest, this is probably the most relatable comedy across the board to everyone that's been a senior or even in high school at all, whether you were like Seth or Evan or whoever's party they were trying to get into. Personally, what pulls these films and all other stoner comedies together are its relatable and comedic characters. They seem to be exaggerated versions of people that aren't too far from reality, yet just extravagant enough to make them engaging to watch. And you landed on McLovin. Yeah, I was between that and Muhammad. Why the fuck would it be between that and Muhammad? Why don't you pick a common name like a normal person? Overall, the stoner comedy is an iconic genre in cinema. Sure, it isn't on the same level as period pieces and melodramas, but it plays a really important part in making everyone feel welcome in film. It also just gives you time to relax. This is a different style of video for me, since I usually just specialise in cinematography, but if you would like to see more videos like this, then let me know below. I hope you enjoyed this video looking at the art of the stoner comedy. If you have a film or TV show that you would like to see me analyse, then leave a comment down below. If you found this informative, a like is appreciated, and if you would like to see more videos like this, then hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.